Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. Is it dangerous to run on a stress fracture? Well, that's a great question. You know, stress fractures are one of the most common problems that runners get when they're overtraining, when they do too much, and when they get injured, stress fractures can keep you off of running for a really long time. So, you know, I get lots of runners who ask me whether or not it's dangerous to run on a stress fracture. And that's the thing, you know, first of all, I'll tell you that the truth is, is that runners are often running on stress fractures, sometimes knowingly, sometimes unknowingly. Sometimes they just think they have this vague ache in their pain. They think they sprain their foot or something like that, but it's actually a stress fracture that's starting to get worse. And, you know, you have to figure out whether or not you're going to really cause any permanent damage to decide whether or not it's dangerous. So, you know, there's somebody on uh, Twitter recently who kind of went off when I was uh, given a webinar about how to run with a metatarsal stress fracture, and he kind of exploded and said that, you know, you shouldn't do it. It's horribly irresponsible. He had seven calcaneal stress fractures, which is a stress fracture in the heel bone. Now, that's a different thing. First of all, anybody that gets seven stress fractures in the heel bone is doing something wrong. Either you have a metabolic disorder or you really need to rethink the way that you're training if you're getting that many stress fractures in one particular bone. Something is definitely wrong. So you gotta figure out what's going on there. But obviously, calcaneal stress fractures are a completely different thing than metatarsal stress fractures. So if you have a calcaneal stress fracture, that's a different kind of bone. It's not even the same type of bone. You know, a metatarsal bone is tubular. It's round, it's, it's a cylinder, and so it's pretty strong. Um, it can withstand a lot of beating, but the calcaneus or the heel bone is a trabecular bone. It's different. It's a very thin shell on the outside and it's very soft on the inside. And when you get a crack in it, it's already a thin, weak shell. So now you have a crack in a thin, weak shell, kind of like a hard boiled egg. If you have a crack in a hard boiled egg, it's not very strong. So you've got to let that thing heal and you can't ignore it. But that is different than a metatarsal stress fracture. The other thing with a metatarsal stress fracture is you have five metatarsal bones. You only have one heel bone. So if you have, let's say, a fourth metatarsal stress fracture, in theory, you could actually do some things like, you know, padding uh, your shoe, changing your inserts, modifying the ground underneath you in a sense by modifying the inserts in your shoe to take stress off of that one injured metatarsal and move it to the other one. So if you apply more stress to the first, second, third, and fifth metatarsal bones, you theoretically reduce stress to the fourth metatarsal bone. So if you're doing that, that's not as dangerous. So if you do that and you don't have any pain, if you do that and you walk around and you don't feel any discomfort, then it may be safe for you to walk around with that modified insert. As it heals, as it strengthens, as it gets uh, a little bit more stability, then you might be able to use a modified insert like that and start running without it being dangerous. But with the heel bone, it's very difficult to take pressure away from the heel bone and put it somewhere else because all the forces are going through the heel bone when you run and you only have one of those bones. So that's different. So you have to remember it is dangerous to run on a stress fracture if you don't do anything to reduce the stress applied to that bone when you run. It's not really complicated. If you keep doing the same thing, you should keep expecting the same result. So if you continue to beat up that bone in the same way by running in the same shoes, with the same inserts, on the same course, at the same pace, at the same stride length, if you don't modify anything, why would it get better? That would not be dangerous, that would be stupid. You're doing the same thing. You know you're gonna make it worse because that's what caused the injury in the first place. But if you modify some things, if you change some things in what you do, you change some things in the routine to change the stress on the bone, then in theory, it may not be dangerous. You just have to figure out what you can do to reduce the stress to that one particular structure to allow it to heal while you keep running. Now, if you do that, it's not necessarily dangerous. So it doesn't always have to be risky for you to run on a stress fracture, but you have to talk to your doctor specifically about that with your circumstances with your particular injury, what is the unique plan that you guys can come up with together and that you can talk to your coach about and put it together so that you have a set of workouts that will strengthen and fortify everything else in the system while that one injured structure is healing. If you do that, even if you have a stress fracture, you can maintain your running fitness and you can get back to running sooner. Doc on the Run, we help injured runners run.